would have thought a state government rejecting the advice of a chief health officer? Well, a hella bloody luya. Finally, way past time, but thank God it's finally happened with the New South Wales government reportedly rejecting the chief health officer's advice to keep lockdowns going until 85% of the eligible population were vaccinated. Instead, as we've seen today, the Berejiklian government is now publicly committed to ending stay-at-home orders or lockdowns for the fully vaccinated once the double jabbed percentage reaches 70%. Now, at last, we've got one government in the country that's prepared to lead rather than just follow advice. And finally, to give us some sense at least of a definitive path out of this pandemic. The pity is it's taken so long and that even now it's still hedged around with qualifications. Notwithstanding over 1,400 new COVID cases today and nearly 1,200 COVID patients in hospital, including 80 now, on ventilators, the New South Wales government is sticking with the National Cabinet plan to end statewide lockdowns at 70% vaccination rate and to end border closures at 80%. Now, it's not exactly Freedom Day, the Monday after 70% jabs are reached, expected, we're told, to be October 18, is still only be able to have five visitors in your home and the non-vaccinated won't be able to go to restaurants and pubs and go into many shops. But without a doubt, without a doubt, it's much better than the miserable purgatory that New South Wales people have endured for the past 10 weeks and that Melbourne has endured for longer than almost any other city in the world, with still no end in sight for those south of the Murray. Now, the reason why New South Wales is sticking with its plan over the Chief Health Officer's objections is encapsulated in today's COVID deaths. All six were unvaccinated and all six had serious underlying health issues. In other words, COVID is mostly only deadly to people who are already very sick and even then vaccination drastically reduces the chances of hospitalisation and death. But it really is extraordinary that elected and accountable premiers and ministers up till now have deferred so completely to unelected and unaccountable health officials for the duration of this pandemic, given the lack of perspective that should always have been expected from subject matter experts and the virus neuroses that was on display even today from Dr Chant after her advice was rejected. Dr Chant refused to say when life would ever be normal again. She was pushed on that, refused to go there, just conceding that it might eventually be similar to life pre-COVID. And the higher the level of vaccination, and if we can deliver that to the most vulnerable of our communities in a very uniform way, we will be in a very strong position to um, go back to um, some life similar to what we had before. She said too that there were long-term lessons to be learned from the pandemic, including mask wearing, and even used the phrase new world order. We will be looking at what contact tracing looks like in the new world order. Now this should terrify anyone who thinks that we should be run by people we elect and definitely not by the advisers and the politicians that, that the politicians appoint. And there's still big issues, of course, to be worked out, such as how these vaccine passports to freedom will actually function and how long the COVID surveillance state can be expected to last or how long we should allow it to last, given despite appearances, this is still a democracy. Now, that said... Let's be grateful that at least in New South Wales, there's some light at the end of the tunnel. That's good for them. And we'll hopefully shame all the other premiers to do better, as they should and as they must. Well, credit personally to, to Berejiklian, who's been under enormous pressure to stick to the COVID zero approach of her counterparts in other states. And the Labor premiers who've been publicly harassing her at every turn, from a prime minister who reportedly, well, his office at least, been briefing against her, and from a COVID-obsessed health establishment, nonetheless, she has held her nerve and she's been properly backed in too by her colleagues, her National Party deputy who's on the program tonight and her treasurer too, which says a lot, given that modern politics, even amongst your own, is usually a snake pit. There hasn't been much leadership 
over the past 18 months as the elected leaders have hidden behind the advice of their officials. But most of the time, and certainly far more than any of the others, Gladys Berejiklian has been an outstanding Premier. As I said, I just hope that by shaming them all, particularly the despot here in Victoria, who has COVID egg all over his face tonight, that Berejiklian's move to freedom lights the way for everyone else.